Hey there, Shoebie Doodlers. How are you doing? Welcome to number 16 of Dogs of Influence. And today we have got Princess Bolt. I'm looking slightly hassled because I've done a whole introduction already and the microphone wasn't on. <laughs> and I wasn't reading. <laughs> I wasn't reading the chat. <laughs> and I think, is it today? I think Judy, I think, has tea with somebody so she's not here to send me a little ding on the phone. Never mind. I can edit out everything that came before. Today, we are going to be drawing Princess Bolt or Fern, who belongs to Anne, who's a friend of mine in um, in the Scotland, in the in Wigtown, which is their secondhand sort of bookshop capital of the world. And they have the, the whole street is full of secondhand bookshops. And they have the most amazing uh, book festival there every uh, late September. And uh, I've been there many times and, uh, and <laughs> lots of people there. And we, in fact, I can tell you that we have uh, Joyce is watching here, says hello from Big Town. Looking forward to this break from shelving books in our bookshop. <laughs> she, she has a lovely bookshop in the old bank. It's called the old bank bookshop. And I tell you what, look, if you are bored in lockdown and you really don't know what to do and you, you're tearing your hair, I'm so bored. Go and find the old bank bookshop in Wigtown and I hope Joyce is still doing this um, and she will, should find a thing on there saying um, we will for, for a fee of course we will send you a random selection of secondhand books which is a really interesting thing to do because you will get to read things you would never ever have chosen and uh, and, and I did that I've got some really interesting things and, and all the time I was reading it thinking I would never have chosen this but this is quite good so um, uh, Joyce will let us know in the uh, chat if she is still doing that. But anyway, let's get back to Fern. Uh, it, she's a cute and cuddly Springer Spaniel with two very special skills, hiding and escaping. She has always managed to find the best hiding places to sleep. On chairs tucked under the kitchen table or on the bed when no one is watching. She's also an expert at opening doors and slipping through gates to escape. That's my best effort at an echo. I haven't got an echo machine. I, should get, I wonder if I can do that. I think Ecamm, who do the, um, the software I'm using, I have to say to them, can you work out a little thing you can press a button and do... Uh, <laughs> do a, an echo thing anyway um she is yeah we've done that but she lives in a town full of bookshops and is often found hold up with a good book in a secret dusty corner she's currently writing her third novel <laughs> the half chewed manuscripts of the first two are hidden under a cushion at the back of the sofa you never know what you find down the back of the sofa do you <laughs> so uh, so this is a, a great story. I'm just about to press the, the, the end button. We don't want to do that. I want to press the button over here. Um, so uh, so today we're going to draw Fern. And let me go over to the overhead camera. And that's... Something's not working here, is it? That should be working. Let me just check around the back there. Um, let me switch that off and turn it back on. Let's see if that comes back on again what's gone wrong there oh there's always something isn't there so there should be <laughs> let me see what have we got no camera attached i had this all absolutely sorted out uh that, that's the wrong camera so this camera isn't fixed up for some reason uh, let's try it again uh is that gonna work <laughs> is that gonna work <laughs> Let me see if we can do something there now. Uh, it was the, uh, no. Oh, there is always something. Oh, there we go. That should work now. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. This is the one we want. There we are. I had everything working perfectly this morning because I had a link up with Kenny who organises the big dog festival which is has it started well it's just about to um and we want to have that's the wrong thing that we've got there as well so i'm gonna go <laughs> <clears throat> uh, it has been a stressful after well it shouldn't have been a stressful afternoon um and i'll just do this so we want 
uh, overhead. That's the one we want. There, that's the one. And then I should be appearing here somewhere. And that's all gone. Oh, it's all going very, very wrong. So if I do that, and I'm going to change... <laughs> I can't believe this is happening. Um, I'm going to change to that camera. I thought I had this working perfectly. And I do that, and then I go and do that. And I'm going to make that a bit bigger like that. And I stick it underneath. And then it's the wrong camera. So... <laughs> <laughs> You're all getting very bored here, I should think. <laughs> I had this all set up perfectly. Um, as I say, because this morning I teamed up with Kenny, who runs the the technical side of the Big Dog Festival, which Anne, who looks after Fern, runs. And so next Thursday is the publication day. <laughs> of Walker, <laughs> the mystery of the missing millions, which is book two in my Walker series. This is Walker, the boy who can talk to dogs. He can really talk to dogs. And so I'm doing all these dog drawings. Um, that's not a dog, but look, there, there's a little Camilla there. She, she's a, um, a dog. So I'm doing all these dog drawings um, now to kind of celebrate the publication, which is next Thursday. And put it in your diary because next Thursday at 1.30 I will be launching my book for the Big Dog Festival. And if you look in the description below, you will find links to that. So you can spend the whole afternoon I'll be doing that and then I'll come and do my very last Dog of Influence drawing afterwards. So I thought um, Fern should be reading a book. And there is something about Fern. I think it's the fact that she's a Spaniel and that um this is stella who's the main character she's a bit she's not actually a spaniel i think she's a a working cocker poodle do if that helps <laughs> um and so she's got a bit of poodle in her and a bit of work working cocker spaniel in her and um and there's something about her i've drawn her so many times it's quite similar to drawing um fern here or princess bolt because she keeps escaping uh, she's obviously a bit of a princess as well so how do we do this um as ever i'm going to start with a circle for the head and i will zoom in a bit here and i thought I'd, I'd do a little bit of um sort of stick dog with this to show how you can do a stick dog um a, a stick dog skeleton basically so so this is the spine going up because we're going to want to have kind of the shoulder blades like that and if you think this is the these are going to be the shoulder joints uh, and you think your shoulder goes back to the elbow and it's quite a short um bit that to the elbow and then down to the wrist <laughs> okay and then you're going down again at a slight angle to the digits the paw right at the end and this one here is going to be doing exactly the same so we can kind of work this out like that at the back here you're going to have um the the hips and if you think you know these are going to be the hip joints and you go forwards to the knee and then uh, it's quite a short that's the femur isn't it i think quite a long section there goes down to the ankle so we'll have something similar going on like this and then straight down, so that's the ankle, straight down to the toes, um, which will then be like that. So these are the mm, it's a tarsals or something, <laughs> something like that. And, and then if you think of the head as being a sphere like that, we want her looking down like that. So the eyes will be kind of like that. So that eye will be quite a squashed in circle and the ellipse, and this will be a bit wider. And then we can bring the... The, the snout forward like that um, and then <laughs> they just have <laughs> mad hair, mad ears don't they spring of spaniels they're just a great sort of tangle and we want her sort of smiling as well because she's reading reading the book oh in the chat let me ask you what book do you think she's going to be reading who we've got the, oh you can go to town on this thinking what kind of book she might read um 
So that's going to sort of come around there, down to the ankle, where you get that kind of dog leg thing happening. And then that's where the, um, the uh, you know, the leg will be, something like that. It's looking a little odd at the moment. I might have to change this as I can. That's looking a bit, a bit twisted. So I think, um, actually, it's going to come back a little bit there, I think, and down like that. So we get get more of a curve like that. And then that other leg will be about there. Uh, and then I think I can now <laughs> get my <laughs> see why to Brighton A4 layout paper pad. 50 grams per square inch. You will find links down below for all of this. And um, and I do, I'm not paid by CY, I'm not sponsored by them, but they're, they're just such good value, such good value and quality. Um, but you can't seem to get them in the States. So I've put a link down below and Amazon links, I get a cut that you don't have to pay extra. Um, <laughs> you'll be helping me to run this channel. <laughs> And um, I put a link there to Sanford, but which I think will probably be about the same because it's just it's just thin paper. We're not after um, you know high quality paper for this. Is the thinness is the most important thing so that you can see through. Uh, I'm going to get a softer pencil if I can find one. Um, and I think I'm going to sharpen that up a bit as well. So. And the, and the previous paper I was using was um, C white cartridge as well, which I'm probably quite free with because I buy it in sort of packs of 500. Uh, and I can't remember, that's that's quite thick. It's about 140 gram or something like that. And um, I'm, I, don't, I don't know, this is, this is a constant thing I'm never quite sure about in the States. Um, I don't think you use this term cartridge paper but quite often what we would call cartridge paper, you call, um, uh, <laughs> it's just gone. Uh, <laughs> somebody will put it in the, um, in the chat. Um, it's just gone out of my mind. There's this other paper, it's called, it's called, anyway, um, but the, the the British version of what? Oh, let me see. Has anybody put anything down there? Let me see. Um, you're not. Does anybody say see white papers? Awesome. Uh, second walk dog. But uh, has anybody mentioned? Oh, I can't. What is it? It'll come to me. Um, but there's this um, paper that I think Americans think tend to call what we would call cartridge paper. I'm not. Sure, I'm not happy about this leg actually. I think the body is too long. Let me get that sort of coming about there. So I think we really want that coming forward um, about like that, I think, something. That's more like it, I think. Um, <sighs> Bristol paper. That's the word. And I think that's still quite a long body. Um, so. Yeah, I, I think if you buy Bristol paper in this country, it's a very smooth finish and it's kind of was traditionally used for kind of um, fashion illustration, stuff like that. Um, so we've got that coming down there underneath the ears, these great big ears like that. Um, like that, yeah. So sorry i'm a little stressed this off i kind of i just had a little parcel to send you think it would be quite simple and and this fantastic modern world you kind of go online and we have this company called hermes who deliver and so, so i went online and i got booked a thing and they say just take it down to your local store and print the thing out rather than I thought, great I don't have to print it out on my printer and stick it down all that hassle so I did that when this was yesterday so I went down and the machine was broken it wasn't printing oh no nothing we can do about that I'll come back tomorrow so I came back this afternoon out of order piece of paper all over it so I looked on the 
website to see where the nearest other one was. It's in the next village, there's a petrol station. So I went zooming off to this petrol station. I got there, and this is about three o'clock, I think, thinking, I'm cutting this pipe. <laughs> so, oh no, sorry, it's broke. <laughs> and so I thought, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? And then I looked up, the next one is in the next village. So I thought, oh, I could do it. I could do it. I could do that. So, I zoomed off to the next village, where sure enough, I got it done. And of course it was, uh, kids are back at school, hooray! But they were just coming out of school. <laughs> so so uh, the place was a bit clogged up. And then I met a uh, traffic lights, all sorts of things. So I didn't get here until about quarter two or something like that, and this and that. And, uh, anyway, I'm here. <laughs> So this is a kind of a roughed up, I'm sort of an iterated version. The body is too long there, I think. And now, now we move on to the sea white of Brighton. Um, that's gone off. Sea white of Brighton watercolor paper. And I'm gonna put that onto there. And put that under there. And Karina, I think, is in the chat telling everybody the wonderful sea white <laughs> watercolour paper is. She asked me about it. And if you're in the UK, actually, um, they have um, a factory shop online. And I think that's probably a bit too round, I think. But never mind, keep going. Um, they have a factory shop and you can buy sort of a big pack of them rather than buying a pad and it's so much cheaper. Um, so if, if you want to do that, <laughs> uh, right, I'm going to get the eye in there while I can because that gets, gets you connected to the character. I think I'm talking too much and not drawing enough today. Um, <laughs> I think it's because I kind of did this this morning and practiced it and thought, oh yeah, this is going to be a good one. And, you know, I felt really comfortable about it and, and I think I probably got too comfortable about it. <laughs> so she's reading the book. We want to see a bit of a collar there. And then we got a funny little tail um and then I'm gonna bring that down there like that and we're going to see a little bit of the elbow there I think and then we can draw these paws and I th it's interesting because she's already become a character um uh, and w w uh, Karen was asking yesterday, you know, what's the difference between a portrait and a character? And and it's, it is definitely about the story. And I, I just really kind of understand Fern, um, Princess Bolt. I can see where she's coming from. And, you know, sort of the writing stories things. And uh, I think it would be... You know, I, I could see how she would fit in with a story and how, you know, how she could have her own little sort of section of uh, the... Because I, what it, what it is, I'm writing, I'm, I'm sort of plotting rather the second, the third book. And in it, there's going to be a collection of dogs who are all social media influencers. And, and so they need a kind of a story, a backstory themselves. There we go. I think that's that's got it. Now, Fern has um, this. This is kind of one of the things that makes her easier to draw. Is that we can bring that line up there like that, instead of going up there, and then we go kind of like that, and then that would be coming around there like that. Uh, and I am going to draw that in. Yeah, I think so. We'll draw that up there, and so. So in my mind, Fern has already become a character, um, and and I sort of feel comfortable drawing a spaniel. Um, 
And so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before you erase, make sure it's dry. Use the hairdryer. Oh, sorry, my brain is all over the place today. And if you've got questions and stuff like that, put them in the chat. And then, well, I'm going to paint this now. And then <laughs> I'll answer your questions. Okay. So this is actually going to be quite simple uh, to paint, I think. Uh, so she's very sort of chocolate brown. And there goes the fire engine, or the police, <laughs> the background. So this is the Cotman, uh, Winsor Newton Cotman Sketches Pocket Set, uh, which is a great little set to start with um, if you want to start watercolour. If you do want to start watercolour, you've never done watercolour before, and you kind of think, oh, it'd be really nice to do watercolour illustrations. Let me just tell you this first. If you enjoy these shows and you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee to keep me going, head on over to patreon.com slash shoerainer where you will find all the details of how you can support this channel. In the meantime, on with the show. And why am I telling you that? Because not, not tomorrow, tomorrow is Saturday, the next Saturday um, on Patreon for my patrons. I'm going to be running two sessions, morning and afternoon, um, which will be a, an absolute watercolour 101, and it's going to be starting right at the beginning. So this is a piece of paper, this is a brush, this is water, and this is colour, and um, and we're going to start right at the beginning. And uh, and if you think you know, oh that sounds good, yeah, come and join me. There are links down below. It's patreoncom slash rain and um and kind of you'll, you'll meet other people very like you probably <laughs> from all around the world um and uh, and we just have fun and you know and then instead of being on the chat trying to go excuse me excuse me and me doing this and not paying you any attention at all because i'm painting um if you're on zoom of course you can say excuse me and i'll go yes and you can ask me your question there and then. So we've got a little bit of a mark there. And we got a little, oh, which way was it? Yeah, we got a, a little sort of bit white on the end of the tail there like that. This is going to be really, really simple, this. So I'm using um, burnt umber here. And, and while it's still wet, I'm going to drop some darker, it's just stronger really um, into it like that so that it will kind of fade is not the word um, in, infuse this <laughs> uh, and and will and it will kind of fade so this is this is a, 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 a water brush that I'm using so the water is in the handle and it just keeps fl flowing down the handle um, so I'm not having to sort of wash it out in a jam jar or anything like that but it it does work slightly differently you have to think slightly differently with a water brush um, and then we want a slightly pinker brown nose so I'm using uh, this is burnt sienna and I'm just gonna do that I'm leaving a little bit of white in there like that just as for a bit of shininess and then I think I'm going to get a little bit of blue into there just to get make it just a touch grayer like that which I'm just going to sort of put in to these pores like that and underneath there to give a bit of shadow and we're going to want a bit of sort of shadow down there as well and underneath there just to give it that sort of feeling of sort of curvature and shape and form um and then we're going to need some around here as well aren't we and on the front probably there uh, like that uh, like i said this is going to be pretty <laughs> pretty simple painting 
I'm not going to make it too complicated. Uh, we might need a little bit on the end there. And um, have you come up with ideas for books? That's what's going to be interesting. What what, what would a dog read? Firm would obviously, well, there was the movie of The Greatest. The, the movie was from the book, wasn't it? There was a book first called The Greatest Gate. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think I'm going to want some more blue in there to get a kind of a blue paper kind of colour like that. <sighs> I think I'm slowly calming down. <laughs> uh, no, normally I use a colour called neutral tint for, for sort of greys and things like that. And when uh, when I paint the characters, I paint them in, in just the one colour neutral tint uh, because I know they're going to be printed in black and white. But I don't want to use neutral tint here because it doesn't come with the set. And <laughs> that's only going to confuse you. Uh, so if you want a grey, then get the brown and mix it with the uh, um, French ultramarine blue and you'll get you can get all sorts of shades of brown so that's kind of a bluey bluey gray there um, uh, and I'm just gonna do that and around there I'm gonna clean my brush so just squeeze gently on the brush dib dab on a kitchen towel and then with a little bit of a squeeze on the brush not too much then you can just let water come out of the brush. I need some more under there, I think. And then we can just kind of have a bit of shadow there. And then we, oh, we, yeah. I need to do something with the eyes. So I'm going to use this yellow and I'm leaving a little bit of space up at the top. I'm leaving it white. And then I'll get some uh, burnt sienna again. I'm just going to bring that around that white space that we left up at the top so that creates a, a reflection and then it's just sort of tickling it into the yellow like that and I think it's going to get a little bit of pink into these <laughs> into these pores as well just to make them look a little bit more cute and tender and maybe just a bit more like that uh, 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 uh. and I think we probably need a little bit of wagging going on there as well and I thought oh, no, actually no I am going to add a bit more I think we need a little bit more in there so this is now dried and so you kind of work that in differently a sort of a second layer of colour um, and it's 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 a, like a glaze that you're putting over the top, and that's just sort of dabbing that in here. And I'm going to make that a bit darker down at the bottom of the ears. I think there. I just need to dry that, so I'm going to get my hair dryer on it again. And I'm going to just do a few last little maybe with a little bit of so there's the brown with a little bit of blue in it just to make it slightly darker and I'm just gonna <laughs> make these ears look a little bit more chaotic because <laughs> the, the the fur on spaniels ears are they are a bit chaotic aren't they like that and oh and I think we probably need just a little bit of hint of blue coming in there for the collar I'm just a little bit of blue in the teeth there so it's not so dazzlingly white. She's been eating her den sticks or whatever they are. <laughs> Getting healthy gums for dogs. I'm going to call that it. And so where are we now? I'm going to put Fern. Princess. bolt <laughs> I keep wanting to say lightning bolt there we go <laughs> I can come and see <laughs> what you have to say there we go I'll just zoom in a little bit oh that's quite a large bit uh, there we go good let me come and see what you have to say <laughs> um, 
we can't hear you we can't hear you we can't hear you uh sure you're muted yeah i guess we have to entertain ourselves hello uh, sound please please judy i don't think judy's here today unfortunately is judy here who says with my little eyes i've been beginning with no 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 uh karina we can he hear you shoo <laughs> Um, did it, did it, did did, 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 I never got your text, Judy. That didn't help. What happened there? Hmm, didn't ping. Um, there we are. Ecam live. Oh, Ecam live. We can hit Ecam live. You're watching. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ecam are the people who create the software that I'm using here. It's just really, really good. If you want to do streaming yourself, I, it's a, it's a Mac thing, but I really recommend Ecam live. Ah, Judy says back to tea. Joyce says, yes, we do. Thank you for the shout out. You're not doing lucky bundles as such, but if people get in touch, could be persuaded to send a random selection. Ecam Live, you can't do Echo in Ecam Live right now, but if you want to DM us off to Twitter, on Twitter after this, we can make some recommendations how you can do it. Thank you very much. Father and Son say good day. Joyce Cochran, Big Dog Festival. There we are. Don't worry, Shu, we are drawing away. Meanwhile, you saw the technology problems. <laughs> I, the is I keep fiddling. Uh, you might remember I had a, a a mic came this week and it had to go. That's what I was sending back, actually. And then I got another one and, and that's not working. And, ugh. And every time I try a new mic, I have to pull all the old ones out. Like, oh, yes, let's not go there. Good. <laughs> you don't need to know my technical problems. Uh, Karen Mint says we can get some sea white paper in the US, but not the layout paper. Um, trail subtitles are. Oh, what was that? Um, I missed something there. That was. Uh, Corinne says, yes, Bristol paper. Trails subtitles are accurate. I'm amazed. Oh, I see you're going back and seeing what it is. <laughs> Actually, uh, yes, I'm, I'm doing, I, I have a whole lot of my um, videos are actually available on a, program, on, a, on, a, on a children's book site called Epic, epic.com. And they're wanting to do subtitles on those now. And they said, have I got the, the subtitle text stuff? I went, uh, no. And so uh, they've, they, they've suggested, so I'm going to send them to, it's an American educational website where they do stuff for um, kids, hard of hearing, stuff like that. And, um, and so they're going to go and do all the subtitles for me on them, which is brilliant. They've got some program that's going to do that. Uh, and I think they go through them and check them as well. So um Karina sort of is Bristol paper sort of a build block hello there so cool I love to draw excellent uh my favorite picture is medieval house excellent did you do that one cool and uh, that's a tricky one the medieval house isn't it <laughs> uh father and son oh you are using an air dry yes you never thought of that did you <laughs> Bill, but what is this patron uh, you just have to kind of find out, really. You have to go and have a look. Uh, she is my new favourite artist. Thank you. Um, Karen McMillan, see spot run, unless that's too basic for fun. <laughs> and that, that might be an American book, uh, because in, in the UK here, we have Spot, who's a, who's, who's a little puppy. Um might be the same spot i don't know and um that, i think the first one was was you know lift the flat where's spot that's you know where it came from i think i think firm would love where's spot lifting up the flaps trying to find spot um trails tm wait are you airing ahead of time because the subtitles predict what you're about to say and get it accurate <laughs> <laughs> trails tm or shall i worry no uh, ai will rule ai will take over don't you worry um Gabriel says the stick figure dog was very helpful. Would it be possible before this series is over to draw another just in case a basic standard or sitting pose? I was thinking actually of doing um, a whole thing about dog um, stick figure poses. In fact, Gabriel. So uh, Anne says she is definitely chaotic. <laughs> Hi there, Anne. I'm glad you're watching. <laughs> Joyce says she might well be reading Diary of a Bookshop Dog. Of course. If you've ever read um, the diary, <laughs> was it the diary of? Is this diary of a diary of a second-hand book? No, what? 
Oh, what is Sean's book called? Uh, Joyce will tell us in a moment. It's I got it somewhere. Anyway, it's it's a very good book. The Diary of a uh, The Diary of a Second Hand Bookshop. Diary of a Bookshop Seller. <laughs> it's a very good book. Um, and it, uh, so uh, Sean has the bookshop across the road from Joyce. There's lots of bookshops in Wigdale. You wouldn't believe it. Um, <laughs> where are we now? Um, Robin. Her son says, hey, everyone. Stacey Newby says, thanks, Mr. Shu. Marco Antonio says, congratulations on your beautiful designs. Thank you very much. Trails, that's cool. Joy says, oh, Eric Hill spot. But Fern is equally gorgeous. Uh, Irina McKay, thank you, Shu. That's a pleasure. I'm, come, I'm, I'm having to read down at the bottom. Oh, microphone's in the way. <laughs> OK, <laughs> we have a 10 second delay. Uh, where Spot might give her hiding ideas for hiding places. Abs that's a very good point, Anne. <laughs> we have a 10 second delay here on the chat. So if you would like to say something or ask a question before I press that button to go, then um, let me know now. Uh, Gabriel says, we stick figure dogs. Thank you, Mr. Rain. I think we've all learned more about dog anatomy than we ever thought we would. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the things that I set out to do when I started this at the beginning of the month. So we've done 15, 16 dogs now. Um, when I set out to do this at the beginning of the month, it was uh, to learn to draw dogs myself. I mean, I've been drawing dogs, but, but to make myself look more at dogs. And just to think of, I, I've drawn nothing but dogs all, all this month. And if you want to get good at something, if you want to get good at drawing something, just keep drawing it day after day, day after day, <laughs> uh, until you get better. And and not just that, but to sort of be, be intellectually curious and to go and you can't see. Um, I think if you, you enjoy these shows and you'd like to buy me a cup that of coffee, one, no, I want that one. Yes, yeah, sorry. God, uh, you can see in the background there. Look, um, I've got my uh, anatomy. Uh, animal anatomy book there uh, so i've been looking at an uh, anatomy <laughs> you didn't want to see that bit sorry <laughs> and, um that's it's an, it's an intellectual pursuit and if you keep drawing and you keep researching you kind of learn more and more and more and you and the more you draw the better you get but if you draw something different every day then you'll you're going to get better at drawing, um, but you're going to the things that are going to improve are sort of style and um, technique and things like that. If you want to get to be a really good dog drawer, you need to draw dogs every day. And uh, it, you know, as an illustrator, you kind of usually have to draw all sorts of stuff and because people are commissioning you to to especially children's books uh, you know one day you're drawing dragons the next day you're drawing you know some trolls or something like that um and and you have to be able to draw everything and that kind of i think you have to have that kind of inquiring mind and that sort of ability to research and and practice and do stuff and and this is where sketchbooks come in as well illustrators all illustrators have sketchbooks on the go and they're they're when you're waiting at a bus stop or something like that in a cafe just sketching people just getting the way people sit and sort of learning those poses and things like that uh, oh we're getting lots of lots of things going on there um uh joyce says looking forward to stocking the new book she thank you joyce <laughs> i'm about to ask where are you going when are you going to go back to cats well that's an interesting thing. I have something planned there, Joyce. <laughs> Come back next Thursday afternoon, maybe. Uh, Trail says, technology and shoe be like chalk and cheese. Well, I don't know. I mean, I kind of embrace technology, but I, I, I think actually my problem is I keep fiddling with it. And if I just got it all set up absolutely beautifully and didn't touch it, it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and says thanks so much Sue. we can't wait to welcome you to big dog next week and fern looks forward to seeing you at the week town book festival soon i would love to come i hope you're going to have it this year i hope you're going to be able to have something live this year at the week town jane carroll says wonderful thank you october b thank you Sue. drawing a subject for a long period of time is definitely a challenge but you 
do learn a lot about your subject absolutely Jane Carroll says Freddie Francis says hello <laughs> hello Freddie Freddie is Canadian he's a Canadian gentleman hello hello there Freddie how are you doing was that to New York? Probably, isn't it? Uh, Joyce says, so lovely to see and hear you again, Shu. Totally inspirational as always. Thank you very much, Joyce. Lovely to see you. Well, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, Trails TM is smiling and we have run out of things there. So I am going to go and get myself a cup of tea. And I'm going to press this button and I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. And I will not see you tomorrow. I will see you on Monday. The good Lord said, take the weekend off, and there's a good reason for it. Okay, <laughs> we'll see you on Monday. You have a great weekend, and take care. Well, thank you so much for watching, and make sure you click that little subscribe button, and when you do, ring the bell so that you get notifications of when I am gonna go live next. You can come along and join in, and bring your ideas as well. In the meantime, stay safe, keep well, and keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.